G'day mate, Forty here, looking out of beautiful Sydney Harbour on the walk from uh, Manly to Spit Bridge and uh, there's something I find amusing and uh, disconcerting about many uh, dissident right ideologues is not their ignorance of religion and Christianity but their lack of awareness of their ignorance of religion and Christianity uh, particularly among Nietzscheans like uh, Richard Spencer or I was just listening to this guy Sosa on Alex Kashuta's podcast and said just because you were raised Christian just because you went to church on a regular basis doesn't mean that you, you know, have any deep understanding of religion and if you're not currently religious if we're not going to discuss religion in terms of religious faith then you have to discuss religion in naturalistic terms that it is a subset of culture and that it is a subset of culture that hundreds of millions of people have found adaptive it's helped them deal with the exigencies of life and it helps them to adapt to the complications and difficulties of life but then you get these Nietzscheans like you know Richard Spencer and uh, Mark Brahman and then this guy Soso Chernyaloshka uh, making these very confident assertions like the following so here we go I just don't think that's accurate I think that's been tried before too like uh, particularly in like the Okay, so he has these, uh, has these critiques of Christianity here. I sort of amplify the point that I'm making for you know, dramatic effect. It's not necessarily that my, the points aren't genuine. They are genuine. These, these are the things I believe, but I do sort of dial it up. Uh, I had a very good discussion with Gio on exactly this topic in the matters of how religion is going to play a factor in the dissident right. And I think it kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier is that there's... So the, the alt-right is overwhelmingly a secular movement, all right? Almost all important... Uh, thinkers in the, the distant right are secular, right? And even the one prominent exception, Andrew Fraser, right? Uh, for him, it's a political organizing principle. Now, I'm not sure he actually believes in anything supernatural or transcendent. So even if most people in the movement are religious, the movement is overwhelmingly a secular atheist movement. So many different spheres, there's so many different little cliques and strains of thought that exist in this broader tent that I don't think it's good. No, there aren't. It's overwhelmingly an atheist movement. And to the extent that religion is invoked by the leading thinkers in the movement, such as by Drew Fraser, it's in service of political cultural goals. It's not because you get any sense that they actually believe in anything transcendent. So no, there aren't all these tents. Virtually every important thinker in the alt-right is an atheist. For there to be a single idea that wins out. Because I think there's a lot of points that each click brings forward that are worth analyzing and sort of internalizing across the board. Uh, my problem, particularly when it came to certain people who were very adamantly religious, particularly Christian, uh, like I was raised Christian, like I've got no problem with Christianity in and of itself, but it's people that think that that's sort of an end-all, be-all political solution. I just don't think that's... Okay, so who thinks that that's an end-all and be-all political solution? Like, he's just summoning up a straw man. So when we have a rise of, say, religious nationalism, that's a response to an increasingly secular world where people have to be you know, extra fervent and j just you know, swim desperately against the current just to stay in place, right? So the people who are Christian nationalists today, they wouldn't have been Christian nationalists uh, 50 years ago. There'd be no such thing as uh, Christian nationalism, right? We, we only get Christian nationalism because of the triumph of secularism. I think that's been tried before too, like uh, particularly in like the 70s and the 80s with the religious right, the evangelicals in America and their sort of attempts to make you know, Christianity into this political force. I think not only is that not effective politically, but I also think that's a little disingenuous in terms of theology. Like obviously. Yeah, does he actually know anything about Christian theology? All right, he's coming from a naturalistic perspective, which is fine, something wrong with that, but he's treating Christian theology as though it's an essential, you know, unchanging part of, of Christianity. When Christian theology changes with times and places, right? It's an adaptive from a naturalistic perspective. Christian, Jewish, Islamic philosophy are adaptations to changing circumstances. It's not an eternal, you know, platonic essence. So you'd think you'd have a little more sophistication here. Christianity is so much bigger than just politics. It's a, it's a belief system. It's a matter of faith. Right, and and he thinks that he he's the first person to realize this. That the people on the Christian right who are organizing, you know, they. They didn't have the gift of, uh, you know, his his insight and his brilliance that they 
that uh, people like Jerry Falwell just thought, you know, Christianity was just, you know, solely politics. And that's going to obviously inform people's political views, but to use it as a tool for, you know, cynical political gain, I think is uh, both ineffective for politics, and I think it's disingenuous for theology. Now, my, my... Oh, so it's disingenuous for theology if people try to you know, create an environment that is more compatible with their thriving. Like every biological organism tries to create an environment that is most conducive to its thriving. Right? This is true for Christians, for Jews, for, for Muslims. Right? It, it's true for every group, every form of life does this. Right? And this is like some cynical, grasping, you know, exceptional thing that's just incompatible with Christianity. It's just so incredibly naive. Why would Christians not want to create an environment, a country, a community, a state, that is most conducive to their thriving. Birds do it, bees do it. You know, why would Christians not do this? And there's no, you know, eternal essential Christian theology. There's no, you know, eternal essential platonic uh, essence of, of Christian theology that would forbid this.